Could you introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Jonathan Woodward, and I'm the TAB Director for the American Montreal Association. Jonathan, we're going to talk today about the open bid list. What is it? So there are 192 bids from regionals to the opening round championship series, which we typically shorten to orcs. Now, most of those bids are earned by teams that finish either as the top seven or the top eight teams, depending on the size of the regional, that move on to orcs. Uh, however, what typically happens is we start out the season with a few extra bids, uh, and those are called open bids. We get more open bids as the season goes on when schools earn more than two bids to orcs. Our current rule is a school can only earn two bids to orcs. So if a particular team, their C team or their D team also earns a bid, those bids sort of automatically go back and become open bids. So we have all of these extra bids and we need to figure out a way of how to distribute those to teams across the country and that's what the open bid list does. So where can people find this list if they want to see it? The open bid list is on the AMTA website. Uh, it's under the uh, tournaments tab. And it's uh, updated usually by myself or sometimes by some of the other uh, AMTA folks. And we try and update it as quickly as possible uh, after each regional tournament concludes. Uh, so definitely by the Monday morning after a tournament weekend is over, you can go to that and it should be updated with all of that weekend's results. So if my team competed at regionals and we did really well, but we just missed getting a bid, and I go on the open bid list and I see that the teams are ranked, how, how do you rank the teams? So the ranking is set by rule. Uh, it's purely based on the numbers of primarily how the team did. Uh, the first thing that we look at is the number of ballots that a team won. Uh, so a team that won five and a half ballots at regionals is going to be higher on the open bid list than a team with five wins. The next tiebreaker in ordering teams on the open bid list is whether the team already qualified a team to orcs. So in other words, if you have two teams with five wins, and one of the schools already qualified a team to orcs, and another team did not already qualify a team to orcs, we're going to say that the team that doesn't already have another team going gets to be higher on the open bid list, because we want more schools to have the opportunity uh, of going to orcs. Uh, the next tiebreaker on the open bid list is the team's combined strength at regionals. And combined strength is the number of ballots that that team's opponents won, sort of a strength of schedule type of thing. So if you have two teams that both had five wins and they both do not have another team that qualified for orcs, the next tiebreaker is their basically their strength of opposition at regionals. After that, there's two more tiebreakers. The next one is the number of teams that competed at the regional tournament. Uh, with larger regional tournaments being the better tiebreaker, uh, we think that if you were at a regional tournament that had, say, 26 or 28 teams, uh, that it's harder to get out, there's more competition there, so that would get precedence over a regional with fewer teams. And then if there's still a tie after that, we go to the team power ranking. Uh, that's also something that can be found on the AMTA website. Again, that's not a subjective determination. Uh, it's purely mathematical based on how each team has done over the past three years in AMTA competition. Uh, so a team with a better team power ranking uh, would win that tiebreaker. So you've talked about how AMTA takes the teams based on how they've done at regionals and ranks them. And we talked about how there can be open bids into particular orcs. Right. So there might be two open bids into the Washington, D.C. orcs and one open bid into the Memphis War. How do you determine which team gets offered which bid? It, it's sort of a hybrid. Um, generally speaking, the teams at the top of the list get first pick. That said, what the tab director does, and obviously right now I'm the tab director, uh, so just speaking from my own practice, um, is I'll look at who the teams are on the open bid list and where the open bids are. So for instance, 
Um, if the first team on the list is very close to Washington, D.C., and the second team on the list is very close to Memphis, um, obviously my hope is that the team gets to go to their closest orc. So I try to work with the teams to make sure that everyone gets to the closest orcs possible. Now, obviously, that's not always the case. Some years we have lots of teams on the open bid list who are, say, on the East Coast, but then lots of open bids, perhaps, in California. At the end of the day, that means that teams from other parts of the country are going to have to go to California if they want to accept an open bid. Um, just because you're offered an open bid doesn't necessarily mean you have to take it. Uh, but when you get down to the end of the list, sometimes the choice is simply, uh, do you want to compete somewhere far away, or do you, unfortunately, will you not be able to compete at all? Uh, so we try to make everyone happy in terms of geography and schedule, spring break, things like that. Uh, but we can only work with the locations that we have. How long do teams get from the time that they get offered an open bid Tell when they have to let you know whether or not they accept it. Generally, only about 24 to 48 hours. Uh, that's typically because we start handing out open bids after all of the regionals are over. Uh, but because frequently orgs start about two weeks after regionals end, uh, we need to get those spots filled quickly. And certainly if we have to go down the list, if people say, no, I can't go to a particular site, then we need to ask the next team on the list and if each team takes a day or two to decide, then by the time you work your way down the list, you don't have much time to prepare for travel and prepare for the tournament. So that's why generally I started about 24 hours. Um, if a team needs more time, we can assess that on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, but about a day is where we start with. If I see that my team is at the top of the open bid list, what sorts of things should I be doing? so that when I get that call from you, I can, I can answer within 24 or so hours. Sure. Um, definitely the first thing you should do is email the tab director uh, just to get a sense of what sort of locations you think the open bid might be offered at. Um, certainly nothing is official until the tab director actually says, I am officially offering you an open bid to this particular location. Uh, but the tab director certainly might say, here are some of the places I think the open bids might go to, and there can be a dialogue over uh, a team telling me, well, we can definitely go to this location, but we can't go to this other location. Is there anything else about the open bid list that you think people should know? I think the main thing is to um, wait until at least after the third week of regionals, um, before, for lack of a better term, getting too excited about where you are on the open bid list. Uh, because certainly a team that is, you know, the number one or number two team on the open bid list after the first weekend could be significantly lower after we get through the majority of the regional tournaments. So definitely wait until after the third week of regionals to see where things stand, both in terms of, one, where you are on the open bid list, and two, how many open bids have been created as a result of teams uh, earning those extra bids that convert to open bids. Thank you. Thank you.